Doctors from the National Institutes of Health have used an experimental treatment to remove any evidence of cancer in a woman who had been diagnosed with the disease. Doctors used a new immunotherapy method that uses the body's own immune system to fight the cancer. Dr. John LaPook spoke with a doctor who is pioneering the treatment. They say into each life a little rain must fall. Rain's coming, big rain. For 52-year-old Judy Perkins, it's been a monsoon. I had a mastectomy, I had all my lymph nodes out. 10 years later, 2013, I felt another lump on the same side and this time it ended up being stage four. So I entered the world of cancer patient, serious cancer patient. Despite hormonal and chemotherapy, by 2015, the cancer had spread to her chest and liver. I came to realize that I was going to die, and that's where my mind was. You know, I felt bad for my family, but I was grateful for the life I had had. But then she found Dr. Steven Rosenberg at the National Institutes of Health. Okay, so we're looking at lymphocytes. He's a pioneer in harnessing the immune system to fight cancer. Genetic mutations in the cancer cell are the trigger causing those cells to grow out of control. Rosenberg's new approach is to find the few immune cells already in the body that can see those genetic mutations and multiply those cells into an army of cancer killers. And this is how you find the needle in the haystack, the one cell that can recognize the mutation. Exactly right. In a lab, Rosenberg's team grew those few immune cells into billions, then injected them into Perkins's bloodstream. There, just like the immune cells appearing white in this picture, they ganged up to attack cancer cells. I think it had been maybe 10 days since I'd gotten the cells, and I could already feel that tumor starting to get soft, and I said, oh, it's working. In 10 days? Well, by then, I was like, dang, this is really working. <laughs> Inside the liver are all of these tumor deposits that are rapidly growing. But as you can see, every one of these lesions has uh, disappeared. Two and a half years later, Perkins has no evidence of cancer. Rosenberg believes the army of immune cells are still at work. Circulating in her body are large numbers of the cells we administered to her two and a half years ago. And that's fundamentally totally different from hormonal therapy, chemotherapy. That's correct. This is just one treatment that's necessary because the cells are alive. They're part of, they are Judy Perkins. Joining me now is CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent, Dr. John LaPook. John, this is really <laughs> remarkable to watch her story. Yeah. We know this treatment is still in the experimental phases, but how successful has it been? Well, you know, they've only had three patients and it was not successful in two of them. One woman actually died because she had an infection, and one of them that just didn't seem to work on. But in Judy Perkins, I mean, it puts me, it puts a huge smile on my face. I love the metaphor. We were sitting out there in our kayaks, and, you know, the storm comes, and, you know, she's weathered. Of course she weathered that storm. She's weathered everything else. Um, you know, she is, um, she's somebody who I've never seen and there has never been a, as successful a case of immunotherapy uh, to treat metastatic breast cancer. So I think this is a very big deal. Right, because we've heard about immunotherapy treatments before. What makes this particular case so special? So this is what we like to call a paradigm shift. You've, you and I have discussed before that the reason, one reason why cancer is so tricky is that it hides itself from the immune system. After all, your immune system can kill bacteria, viruses. Why can't it kill the cancer cells? Well, it's because it puts kind of like a cloak of invisibility, like in Harry Potter or the other science fiction uh, films. What, they, what it turns out, though, is that there are a very small number of immune cells, a very, very small number, that actually can see the cancer. And they can see very specific mutations that are just uh, present in that one person's cancer. So what Dr. Rosenberg and his team found out a way to do was to actually find those very few cancer cells, uh, sorry, find those very few immune cells, isolate them, blow them up, magnify them billions of times, and then put them back into Judy Perkins and they went to work they melted away the chest tumor. They melted away the liver tumors. Five of them, the size of the golf balls, went away. And what I found so fascinating was when Dr. Rosenberg said to me, this is a one-time treatment. It's a biological treatment. So once they're in there, those cells are still there two and a half years later, acting as like guardians of her body 24-7 in case there's a tiny little cell that comes back. Now, 
caveat, which is this is only one person. It's possible that it could come back if it mutates, if there's one cell in there that has a mutation and the white cells that have been put back in don't, don't take care of it. But, I mean, to me, this is something that can be used to treat, uh, and to Dr. Rosenberg, more importantly, the, the hundreds of thousands of people who die each year of these solid tumors. Those are the toughest ones to treat. There are 600,000 people or so who die every year. And about 90% of those are the solid tumors. By that I mean like colon, lung, breast, prostate, ovary. Those are the ones that have been so difficult to treat. Well, it really is so incredible hearing her story. And Dr. Rosenberg is a pioneer when it comes to cancer treatment research. So what does he see now as the next steps? Well, he's always very cautious. I'm trying to say, so is this, right. you know, is this it? And he said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm cautious. You know, he has been doing this for 40 years, Elaine, 40 years. He's had, he told me he had about 40 days off in that period. So this is his life. He's so excited. He can't wait to see what happens next. Um, I said, do you really think you have, have it now? And he goes, I feel sometimes like I'm holding on by the skin of my teeth. So he's very, very modest. But I think he understands that this is something where in the future, in the future, you could see a time when somebody has a cancer, you take a chunk of that cancer, you put it into a machine that analyzes all the mutations, because this is really how this works. It found the specific mutations. This woman had 62 mutations in her cancer, but only four of those mutations elicited any kind of immune response. So you find Find out which of the mutations elicit immune response, figure out a way, you know, just automated fashion to get those, those uh, lymphocytes isolated, grow them up, and spit out at the other side of that machine your treatment, a biological treatment that could treat any number of cancers. Now, I know I'm getting excited. I am excited. It's a long ways away. There's a lot of things that could go wrong in the meantime. But for me, to see a woman who has widely metastatic breast cancer with five Mets in the liver and a big Met metastasis, we call it a Met as a, for short, in the, in the chest wall. And to see that totally go away and to see her kayaking two and a half years later, I mean, it blows me away. I'm really excited about this and I cannot wait to see what the next steps are. Just remarkable. Dr. John LaPook, thanks so much, John. Thanks.